In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we'd like to give you some tips on using the Body Shaper set of tools to improve the appearance of people in your photographs. There are many tools in this subset, so we're going to take several tutorials to show you the details of all of them. We're going to improve the appearance of the guy you see on the screen. To do that, I go to the Guided button at the top, wants to make a copy of my photograph, I'll say OK. And then I go under the People Beautifier, I expand that area, and choose the third option down, which is Body Shaper. Now when I look at this, I see that I have three tabs at the top, and then I have on the first tab four buttons, and then two buttons that control a mask or brush. We're going to focus on part of that in this tutorial and the other part of this tab in the following one. We have four different buttons. The, la the leftmost one is Forward Warping Tool. That's the one I think you'll use the most. And then we have a Pucker Tool. And then we also have a Bloat Tool. The next button isn't a tool itself. It actually helps undo some of the work that you've done. We'll show you why it's useful. And then we have a Mask Brush where you can add or remove areas that are not impacted by these buttons at the top. So let's get started. We're going to use the leftmost button, which is the Forward Warping Tool. So before I go there, I'm going to go in on his face, click on the tool, and drag it. Now you see a circle. You can control the size of the circle, either with a slider or if you have a scroll mouse with the scroll wheel, and the strength. And so what I'm going to do is move it to his cheek. Now the area of action is the center of the circle where the plus is. So I'm going to move in and we'll make his cheek a little bit narrower here. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, actually move his neck in a bit. And if you want to see the difference you've made, you click on the crayon or pen at the bottom in the toolbar and hold it down. There's our before and there's our after nice little touch. And when you're using these tools, I encourage you to try to minimize how much you do because the, the farther you go with these, the more odd things happen that you may not like when you're, everything is said and done. But I do like this tool. It's pretty simple to use. It does some nice things in, in moving one direction or another. Now, one problem we're going to have is if I've done a lot of editing on this for a long, long time in a lot of different places and I want to start all over again, I click the clear button, but maybe I don't want to start over. I just want to change some of it. That's what the last button is for. When I click on that, it's my recover tool. And if I hover over that, it will slowly begin to move that part of my picture back to normal. It, notice it left the other one untouched. Now the clear button takes everything back to the way you started. So this is a time saver if you just want to change a few things. And often what I'll do is I'll click on the pen or pencil at the bottom and verify uh, have I changed all the pixels over here. This is especially true if you make a big mistake. So if I go in like this and then try to change it, I can hold the button. It'll slowly bring it back to what I think is normal. And it might look good, but I, I have to verify it. Oh, there's some cheek hair that I didn't cover. So you have to watch this one or you might not get everything fixed the way you wanted it. So that's the most important tool. This is the undo besides simply doing a clear or you can do control Z. Let's look at another thing that we have here. We have some brushes. Why are they there? Well, I'm going to move the cheek in a little bit here and notice what I did. I've moved the pole of the lamp behind him. I'll do control Z to get out of that. If I want to control an area that I do not want to have impacted, and we'll zoom in on it. If I want to block this out so it can't be touched, all I simply do is I mask it. And that's what the brushes are for. And in this case, I don't have to mask the left area if I'm only changing things to the right of it. And if I want to undo part of the mask, I can press the other button, hold the Alt key down, same thing. So let's just make sure here that all this black is covered and even maybe a little extra here. Okay, so 
Now when I begin to use the tool to change his face, I can move up here fine, but when I get to this area where the two touch, there's really no pixels to replace them, so I can't do anything. But I've protected the, the, the post here, and so I can move the chin in down here in the shadow of the chin, and we're fine, and we're not going to warp this one. That's one place where the mask is useful. Let me show you another. We're going to fit it like this. The other thing that I do when I'm working with this tool uh, with a human face is I usually mask the eyes. Oops, wrong tool. <laughs> we'll do control Z on that one. Is I usually mask the eyes, especially if they have glasses, because I don't want them distorted. And the nose. And the mouth. And I'm doing it more sloppy than I normally would, just so you can see. When I mask these areas, they're protected. So I can do other kinds of things that I want, and it's not going to affect those areas. I'll do Control Z to get out of that. The other thing is, is once you have your mask in place, you, you can turn it off because it really doesn't look all that cool, and it still is in effect. So you protect those areas so things don't get distorted. And it might be things on the person. It might be things outside the person that you want to make sure don't get affected by this kind of distortion you're going to do. Before we finish this lesson, let me show you one other thing that's important. We're going to look at two tools next time, but let me show you why I seldom use them on skin. We have the pucker tool and the bloat tool. Now, sometimes you can use the pucker tool here on skin, on wrinkles. Now, what Pucker does is it makes everything shrink to the very center where the plus is, but it does a 360 degree action. So every pixel in the 360 will move toward the plus sign. You see, I can shrink the wrinkle. I can make it a very thin line here by holding it down and moving it. All right, but it's affecting every pixel in 360 degrees. Sometimes that might be what I want. I use it sparingly, and my, my rule of thumb is always use these tools sparingly, or you won't get the results you want. But if I take that, for example, and just stick it here and hold it down, you're going to see I'm going to get a star pattern where all, everything has been tightened up as I hold it down longer. And this is probably not something you want on human skin. It does work on clothes, and we'll show you that in the next tutorial. Uh, we also have a bloat tool, which is the opposite. Again, it's 360, and you can move it while you're using it, but it will tend to expand an area. And we can give him a fatter neck if we want to. But again, I am not all that excited about how it handles the pixels when it comes to skin. Might might be workable here, but I'm not all that happy with, with the results. So we're going to talk about how to use these two tools to impact positively images in the next tutorial.